What is going on everyone? My name is Adam Gelman. Welcome to another video here. Today we are going to be doing a tale of the tape, which is something I've been wanting to do for a while on a couple of products here uh, that have really sort of taken a, a big part of my focus uh, for 2022. Today I want to do something very laser focused or something and that is cover something that I know a lot of collectors haven't had a lot of familiar with familiarity with and that is the select animal print parallels that were released as part of the 2022 select WWE set. So let's talk about what this means overall because these inserts are part of the normal sort of parallel structure that Panini has had in a lot of products going back a number of years. And for the first time, these products have been um, transferred over to WWE and we have seen a massive following for them. Um, as they have been sold, bought and sold on eBay. So really, let's take a step back here and understand a couple of different things that have to do with how Select was built and how Select was built in the outside hobby before it came to WWE. And then from there, how it has sort of played out as it's spanned now across hobby and retail uh, for products that we've seen released in 2022. Most recently, uh, with you know about October to November timeframe now, sort of now a, a very clear sort of picture of how the market's responding. So everybody wants to know, how are these animal parallels sort of fu functioned in? Where do they sit? Why are they what they are? And let's go back to kind of where Select started. And if you go back to the beginning of the, the Select brand, around the early 2010s, Panini wanted to create a brand that mirrored a lot of what Topps Finest was on the top side. Um, Finest has been around since the early 90s, and when Topps was building um, their chrome structure, uh, it became one of the most successful brand types in all of the industry. We're talking about Topps Chrome, Topps Finest, Bowman's brands, which are Chrome, Sterling, and other things. Like the Chrome stock has been around for many decades, and it is reaching a point now where it is the premier type of card in the hobby. When Panini took over the NFL and NBA licenses, uh, first in 20, 2009, 2010, at the beginning of Panini America's run, um, those brands really sort of took off uh, because the NBA and the NFL were such heavy premium markets. Uh, they had international followings, especially the NBA. And when new collectors were brought in uh, during the boom that happened in the early 2020 uh, time frame, all of them saw the top two sports in NFL and NBA have nothing but Panini products. Now, the animal print piece of this is a weird one, because if you look at the way that Prism and Select and their Chrome stock, Panini's Chrome stock products um, really have sort of functioned as a part of the hobby. They have run the presses to a vast degree because those products are so insanely popular as flagship brands that they can support multiple configurations. We're talking about hobby boxes, retail, um, hobby light configurations. So you're talking about a hobby box consolidated into a smaller platform with fewer hits, different parallels to basically extend the ability for Panini to market and sell their Chrome stock products to the largest possible audience. Now, that you, there's only so many things you can do with a base card. You can change the colors, you can change the stock itself. So instead of saying like, this is a red card with a red border, now we're having a red card with a red wave stock pattern. We saw that in WWE Prism. Um, we've also seen things like Cracked Ice and Flash and all sorts of different parallels, all of which are designed to create bigger collector interest in chasing rainbows because we all know how important that is across every area of the hobby. And then secondly, how do they drive more people to buy into configurations that allow them to print products without numbering cards and limiting their ability to sort of push out a product further than its normal intended use. So it used to be in 2012 when this started, this whole thing started with Prism, there was only like two parallels. There was a silver parallel and there was a gold parallel. By 2014, there were 10 to 15 parallels. By 2022, the most recent sort of Prism launches in NFL and NBA, there was as many as like 50 parallels. And you can say base card, base color card, base pattern card, and now 
the animal prints, which have become insanely popular um, across a number of their brands, including Select, Prism, Mosaic, and um, others that, you know, sort of breed across configurations and stuff. So in WWE, it's been very limited. We didn't get any Animal Prince cards in Prism. I think it was kind of their first foray into it. So it was one of those things that every stock pattern really was its own color. It really wasn't layered where you had um, stuff other than like the red and then the red wave or the um you know it was really the only time we saw that uh, green and green pulsar in the retail side of prism had some variation but it was really limited because there weren't as many configurations to support that prism retail only had the green and then the green pulsar as the only hits in that product which is why that premium sort of retail configuration didn't happen like it didn't really drive, jive the way it usually does with collectors where in select everything changed. We had, um, because the retail configuration had its own level of parallels, according to uh, the checklist, we had like a gold in hobby and then a gold flash in retail. We had a, uh, and we also had black flash too. So there was like a one-on-one version of that. Then there was wave parallels, which we've only seen limited so far, because I don't think we've seen all of the configurations released yet. Um, so you have like a red and then a red wave. Um, you also had four different base types. So you had Concourse, Ringside, uh, Mezzanine, and um, Premier. All four of them had their own sort of parallel structure. So you had like pink for retail. You had, um, you know, the flash patterns plus some of these animal prints. Now, the animal prints themselves have three different variations across the line. The first is the hobby exclusive, which is the zebra print. Those tended to be case hits, and they are available through all three of the hobby configurations: Premier, Concord, or Concourse Premier, and then Ringside. You have the elephant print, which is retail exclusive, and that is across the three different hobby uh, base levels as well. So you have elephant, Concourse, elephant Premier, and elephant Ringside, and then you have the tiger stripe, which is again across all three of the um, hobby parallels. And I think from a rarity perspective, that's really the main question where a lot of collectors just don't have any clue because they aren't numbered. And in an era where everything is numbered, Panini has taken the opportunity across their hobby products to insert exceptionally rare, unnumbered insert cards. We talked about these at a couple of other videos uh, that I did with Tony on, w on WTC, um, where we were saying like, because it's no longer, you know, good enough just to have like um, one of these hobby parallels and it's numbered and doesn't really give anybody a clear sort of like a picture on it. Like those types of things expanded out to saying, how do we create a chase that doesn't have an autograph tied to it, doesn't have a relic tied to it, is really just based on the insert rate. And that's where things like the Color Blasts and Prism, the Downtowns, which uh, haven't come to WWE yet, Kaboom, um, the uh, Animal Prints, um, although some of them are numbered in other products. Um, you know, All of these things are really just created to intrigue collectors to a point where all of them are trying to figure out where to level this in terms of the value for their PC. So then um, let's look at the rarity for WWE. Everybody always asks me, how many zebra prints per card do you think there are? And there are three levels. And if, if a wrestler has a, a, a zebra in all three, is there a variation between the number of concourse zebras, premier zebras, and ringside zebras? And the answer is, I don't know. Um, I don't know because this is the first opportunity that we have had to see how these play out. As case hits, we expect that they are – they're probably – you know, 5,000 ish cases of select, give or take, I would be my guess. I haven't done the exact, exact math. I'm guessing there's somebody out there that can take the pack odds and, and sort of flush those out, but I'm guessing around 5,000 cases, maybe at most 10,000 cases. So I'm guessing if that's really the case of, uh, or is that really the, the configuration of all the cases, you're probably looking at 20 to 25 of the concourse, 15 to 20 of the premier, and then probably 15 and below of the ringside. If I had to take a guess, 
it's a lot harder to find the ringside zebras because the ringside is the top base parallel. Um, so I'm guessing there's fewer of those than there are the other ones. I've seen a lot more concourse ones pop up than I have premier and ringside, especially. Um, so if you're looking for a ringside version of your player collector or the target that you want to have, like, let's say you want to get the rocks ringside zebra, I, it's probably going to be a 10 to 15 print card, even though on the back, it's not going to be numbered. Um, then when you look at that in the grand scheme of things, like a gold is out of 10, a green is out of five, but we're seeing the zebra sell at those levels because people just don't know. Panini is not going to release the information of how many of these actually exist within their sort of set configurations. So then let's look at the elephants because the elephants are retail only. So if you buy a case of hobby, you don't have any shot of pulling any of the elephant parallels. And the elephant parallels were something that, you know, doesn't have as much of the hobby focus as, as the zebra and the tiger. They are much more sort of focused in sort of like just another animal print. The other ones that really sort of have the biggest following are the dragon scale ones, which usually are reserved for select. Um, we have peacocks, which are usually they're like look like little peacock feathers on the on the stock. Those are usually in mosaic. Um, and then you have the tigers and the zebras. Um, we've seen giraffe. We've seen um, you know a couple of different animal prints that are out there that haven't made it to WWE. But in the grand scheme of things, like zebra has a following, tiger has a following, elephant not as much. Now I've also seen a lot more of the elephants pop up than the tiger stripes, um, and it makes me think that either the retail configuration blasters that support the elephants are really the the main thing there um, that there's just more of them that have come out first. They may be equal to the Tigers. Again, we don't know because they're not numbered and Panini is not going to tell us. So if you're trying to figure out in a rarity standpoint where each of these places, uh, where each of these sort of parallels fall, I'm probably thinking that Elephant is probably around, you know, 25-ish for the Concourse, 20-ish for the Premier, and then probably 15 for uh, the Ringside. Now, as we go into the tiger stripe, again, these are all projections and guesses just based on what I've seen sell. So you'll have to uh, you'll have to sort of look at this from a very subjective point of view. Tiger seems to be the rarest of all three. And it's weird because like in a retail configuration, a card out of 25 may only pop up once or twice. We saw that for the green pulsars, especially the green pulsar autographs in, in Prism. Like those cards rarely had um, more than a few pop up at once. I think I've seen for my PC, which is Becky Lynch, I think I've seen maybe four or five of her out of 25 Pulsar base cards pop up. I've only seen one of her Pulsar autographs. So you can imagine that even though they're out of 25, they're really hard to pull because retail is just a weird sort of universe for cards. The second piece of this is the tiger stripes seem to be rarer than the elephants. So when you think about how many of these probably exist, I wouldn't be shocked if, if there were 15 in the concourse, um, probably 10 to 15 in the premier, and then maybe five to 10 in the tiger uh, ring sides. And those are just seeing like, I've only seen a couple of each of the tiger ring sides pop up for Becky Lynch, my PC, I've only seen one. And I just got it in. It's now, you know, November-ish, beginning of November. Like the product came out a couple of months ago. So even though the retail configuration has been out forever, I've only seen one of my person and I found it on a really weird place. So it wasn't even on eBay. And that's where I think a lot of these collectors who are out there trying to figure out where these exist within their PC, they're going to have a very tough time completing the zoo. So I refer to the zoo as getting the zebra, the elephant, and the tiger of a certain parallel. Um, it's sort of a fun way of looking at this, and a lot of people have sort of taken on their PCs to include the zoo as a, as a collection focal point because it's so cool when they're all together. Um, the other thing with retail is like the audience is so different because they're in the retail aisles of Target, Walmart, large retailers. You can buy them online, but some kid could walk down an aisle, open a blaster, pull a really nice card, 
falls in between the seats and that's the end of it. So, you know, we're talking about like unnumbered cards that we don't know how many are out there. There's a lot of kids that really have had a challenge, um, you know, sort of making those available to the general public because they're children. So like a lot of the cards that we would expect to be readily available may not ever be readily available. That's even if everybody rips the absolute shit out of these blasters, which I think to a degree select is probably the, one of the best retail products I've ever seen created for WWE having the flash um, parallels, having the mezzanines and their sort of retail structure, plus the exclusive animal prints. Like this is a no brainer. I ripped more of retail. I think I ripped about 50 blasters just because of all of this new content. Um, and to give you guys a, a, a sort of point of view into how many blasters I had to rip before getting one of these animal prints, there's supposed to be one animal print per case. Um, I ripped 50 blasters and pulled one. I pulled an elephant of Mr. T. So, you know, as you guys are sort of looking at this from a perspective of like, how do I get these for my collection? It's really, really difficult. They're very competitive. The, the sales go like this. So not everybody knows what to look for. Not, not everybody knows how to spend. They don't come up very often. So a lot of this stuff changes like daily and just keep an eye on it. Like, I think these cards are exceptionally cool. They look great in hand. The patterns that on the stocks with the animal prints make them look even better. But overall, from a, from a perspective of like why select retail is so much fun, these are the reasons that it is. These cards are the reasons that everybody has been chasing these blasters. Now, as you look at a hobby case as well, like having one per case makes them even more rare because you could get a hobby case and pull a concourse zebra rather than a ringside or a premier. And that's where the value sort of fluctuates over time. I believe there is a parallel structure that exists. So you're going to have more of the contacts or more of the concourse ones versus the ringside ones. And I think the same exists on the retail side. So I just wanted to take some time to go through this because I, I think a lot of people out there are confused. I also have a guide of kind of how these have played out and how these are, are built. You can access that um, on a link that I'll post in the, in the uh, comments of this video. You can also follow me at SC Uncensored on Twitter and at WWE Gelman on Instagram. I cover a lot of this stuff. You can see which one of these um, I've had. I've actually been able to complete the zoo for my PC. So I have all three of all three levels for, for my uh, Becky Lynch PC. And that's awesome for me. Just recently was able to complete that. So please check it out. And uh, hopefully we'll have... Um, a lot more people sort of chiming in with their experience of how they've approached the zoo uh, for select WWE. And then as we get into sort of other configurations, could we see like things like the dragon scales or the snake skins or the things like that, that are part of the hobby sort of experience in other products? I hope we do. Either way, I'm going to be making more of these videos as we get going. This has been sort of a fun medium to explore. I know my production methods may not be um, the best that you've seen, but I'm excited to sort of share some insight as we go forward. So be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Talk to you guys later.